GTI Turbo, I like that. Turbos always make everything better, especially the weekend or weekday or weeknight. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no matter what the question is, the answer is always boost. We're live. It's 7.33. I'm late, but I'm here, so it's all good. Tonight, we're going to talk about, <laughs> as people who have been here know that when I recommend a cam, normally it's a dual pad cam and and very well, I don't think I've ever recommended a reverse split camshaft, even on a turbo application. Although I have seen those on factory OEM applications where we have more, a reverse split cam is where we have more, um, more duration and, and uh, it's, it's done a lot on more lift than more intake lift than exhaust lift, but more exhaust or, or more intake duration than exhaust duration is not uncommon on OEM applications, but it's not normally something I recommend for a performance camshaft. And very rarely do I recommend single pattern cams. A lot of the older comp cam stuff was single pattern. Their, their Magnum stuff before they went to the, before they introduced the extreme energy line, a lot of their Magnum things were um, single pattern camshafts. And I've done lots of testing on single pattern cams uh, for a variety of different engine families. And when we run single pattern cams, what typically happens as long as we keep the, as long as we keep the intake duration the same, when we run a single pattern version of, of a dual pattern cam or a dual pattern version of a single pattern cam, depending on which way you think that you're going there. When we do that, what typically happens is I know that what we did, we did this not too long ago when I was doing a, a, an engine masters thing. When we did that, they um, they tested, I, th I think it was a big block, might've been a small block, whatever. <laughs> we tested the single pattern cam. What the single pattern cam did is make a little bit more low speed power and then made quite a bit less top end power than the dual pattern cam did. And that's that's more often than not, that's the case. But <laughs> the question becomes now, well, Richard, what, on what application might you use a single pattern cam? Because I know all the turbo guys are going, well, you said a low speed power, that equates to better uh, boost response. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit too. But I'm, I'm, but I'm actually, we can talk about that afterwards. But the first thing I want to talk about is I actually did use a single pattern camshaft on a specific application that was not turbocharged. And what it was, I put together a big block Chevy, a 454, and I and was going to use it in a boat application. And actually, given the fact that it was a V drive application, um, we could have done something a little different on it. But what I was, but what made me choose this kind of camshaft was the exhaust. So we had a wet exhaust. So we, with the wet exhaust on the boat, we, you're a little bit concerned about reversion. And so you don't, so you can't pick a big camshaft in it. And then you pick a big camshaft in it. I, I wouldn't pick a big split for it. Cause you just don't, you can't have water coming back in basically. Um, Cause not only are the water, their, their cast iron exhaust manifolds water jacketed and then um, they have water flowing around them, but then they also inject water out the, out the pipes to, to change the noise quality, basically to muffle the thing. And so the camshaft that I picked, I picked a, a camshaft that had enough duration that was getting near the limit of what I thought duration should be for that exhaust. And I also wanted more um, low speed power and a little bit better leg drivability. I wasn't going to ever max this thing out. Um, I think that this thing made, if I look at the, I think this thing made peak power at, yeah, it had, it had, it had 5,500 or 5,600 RPM to play with, which was plenty. It had near 500 horsepower and it had way over 500 foot pounds. And that's the thing that I was concerned with. And I was concerned with the power, the torque production down low for some reason, even though it was a, even though it was a V drive. Um, we, what I did was I spec'd out a single pattern camshaft for it and it actually worked out fairly well. It did the things that I wanted it to do. Um, cause I, I played with exhaust duration also, or, or not exhaust duration. I, I played with lobe separation angle also. So we could minimize what I wanted to do is minimize overlap and kind of, I, I, I kind of wanted to zero in on the, 
on the low speed power part of it. And it ended up working very, fairly well. I think it made 530 or 40 or something. Yeah, 530 or 40 foot pounds of torque. And I, because I was also in the back of my mind thinking that I didn't know how long this motor would ever would be in the boat. And as it turned out, the answer was never. <laughs> I'd never put it in there. I got rid of the boat long before I did that. But I was also thinking that down the line that this would be a also might be a good truck engine. So there's something that you could use for towing and stuff and, and, and would be pretty good. The camshaft might be a little on the big side for something that I would pick specifically for like a tow application, but by making it single pattern, um, we probably help, help that cause out a little bit. And that, and that's, that's kind of where I'm going with this is that I'm, I might think about single pattern cam for a specifically for a towing application. Like if you only cared about 40, you know, from idle to 4,500 RPM kind of thing for these, for these towing applications that that might be a consideration for a single pattern cam. It might work better than a dual pattern cam if we could, but I'd want to play with a few different camshafts to see what's happening there. I, I'd like to run them. The thing that we don't ever get to do in the engine dynos, they don't ever get to run them at, you know, at part throttle, at half throttle or three quarter throttle or whatever. And we could do that. We could test that. But that might feel a little different in the truck. And the other thing I really don't get to do, and somebody asked a good question about this this morning on the on the uh, Project Mor Morning Motivation show, that they wondered what got, how much could they change fuel mileage by changing a camshaft? And they were correlating the torque production at wide open throttle, albeit at a low engine speed, kind of where you would be cruising for fuel mileage. And, and I honestly don't have a feel for that. I don't know at very little throttle angle, for instance, that it would take while you're cruising down the freeway, you know, at 70 miles an hour at 2000 RPM in a, and this was an LS application on LS application where you'd be cruising down the road at very little throttle at, like I said, at 2000 RPM, which one of those cams, even though they had, let's say that they had comparable torque outputs. Um, I don't know the one that had a little bit more torque output would make more torque. I mean, would make, would, would get better fuel mileage just under cruise because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the other things. I don't know um, how much throttle angle one, one requires more than the other. You know, I just don't, I don't have a feel for that. I, I would lead, I need to do more correlated testing on that to see what would happen if we did. And, and that kind of regimented testing would be quite a bit. But on this big block, uh, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, okay, good. I'm, I'm really more interested in all of the, I'm not interested in 6,500. I'm interested in 5,000 or 5,500 and below. And even that would be, you know, for, for a dedicated tow application, that would probably be more RPM that I would be concerned with. 4,500 would probably be more of the thing. So I, on a dedicated tow application, I probably would, uh, on this particular camshaft, step down in duration also i would not make it i would not put this as a 224 cam i think i would do something a little bit smaller even though it was this one was 468 inches because it was a 60 over 454 obviously if you want more torque <laughs> you'd make it a 496 because that that always helps with torque but it also uh tends to not help with fuel mileage. So if you can do that with a 454 and not a 496 i think that that would get better mileage but maybe towing something very heavy, you know, the argument is always, oh yeah, but you use less throttle because you have more power and all that. And so I don't, I don't know, like I said, more testing would need to be done for me to correlate that to determine what's going on on the dyno versus what's going on ac actually in the real world to see. Um, and, and maybe we could, if I could figure out what the, see, even if I figured out, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm second guessing myself, even if I figured out what the amount of power was required to do the towing, you know, going about figuring out which one of those achieves that amount of power at the, you know, most favorable brake specific number. Um, and then we'd have to play with, well, okay, well, what air fuel would we run while we're doing that? And how much timing would we get away with or how much timing would it require? It'd be a lot of stuff, but it'd be fun, but it would still be a lot of stuff. But that was one application where I would use 
a single pattern cam. In fact, that's going to be our poll for our Friday night. Have you ever run a single pattern camshaft? So that, that will be our poll. The, the, other, the other thing to think about is, well, Richard, you're always telling people that when they are running a turbo, if you're running your 700 horsepower turbo or 500 or 600 or 1,000 or whatever it is, if you're trying to do that, you, you, meaning me, normally recommend a small camshaft because you can make that power anyway. Yes, and, and also no. I, I don't recommend trying to do that, trying to max the turbo out with a stock camshaft. The problem is not, not that a stock camshaft isn't a turbo camshaft. It is. It works very well with the turbo. It's just that it doesn't make very much power. So it was designed to do something else and make a given power level. So like on an LS, on a, on a 5.3, it makes about 350 horsepower the way that we test it. On, on, a, on an otherwise stock 5.3 with headers and stuff on it. So if it makes 350 and you're trying to make 1,000, it's a lot easier to get from 400 or 450 to 1,000 than it is to get from 350. Because if you try to get from 350 to 1,000, it takes a lot of boost to do that. And <laughs> whether or not you want to run, run lots of boost and also whether or not that particular turbo is going to want to run at that pressure ratio is, is another consideration here. So I, I recommend at least some kind of camshaft. So the, the, the good thing on in the side of the LS and, and with regards to the turbo is that when you step up from a stock camshaft, especially that LM7, which is the mildest of all the factory camshafts, when you step up from that to any other camshaft, so you go from that to a torque cam, which is like a 202, to, to a truck Norris cam or to the extreme energy 265 cam, you know, a, a 208 or 210 or 216 or any, any kind of even little camshaft like that. Even that first step is such a big jump in power. It's easily going to be 50 horsepower, 30, 40, 50, 60 horsepower. And when you do that jump and then you get to multiply that by the power, now you're talking about a hundred horsepower change under boost or more than that, depending on, depending on how much boost you're running and where you're trying to get to. So it's even a little camshaft is such a big change in power and it's not unusual. It's, it's fairly simple to take a camshaft and pick up a hundred horsepower on a five, three that that's certainly possible with just the camshaft because you can get from 350 to 450 and we've done it many times that's a pretty good size camshaft, but still it's possible to do that with just a camshaft. And, uh, we saw that on the, in fact, we saw that on the L33, we went from 460 or 465 or something, uh, up to near 450 or 460. So it's, it's not that hard to get that far from that kind of camshaft. And then once you do that, you're talking about, Oh, look, now we made 900 at 14 and a half pounds. It's, that's a big change. So I recommend some kind of camshaft. And so <laughs> going from 350 to 400 or 350 to 450, that's good. It makes getting to any, any higher boost level or any, power, any higher power output at a much lower boost level, that's pretty favorable. So the question then becomes if we run a single pattern cam and we pick up power over a stock cam, how much do we pick up? So naturally we pick up less than you would if you ran a dual pattern cam. And are, and are we picking up enough? And that's going to depend a, a lot on the other things, like how much duration are we running and where's the LSA and, and that kind of stuff. So even though it <laughs> it will help and, and a single pattern cam is a turbo cam, because in fact, a lot of them, a lot of the OEM cams or, or the, the factory kind of turbo cams actually would be a single pattern cam. Some of them would even be reverse split camshafts. And so they they are, <laughs> those kinds of cams also are turbo cams because sometimes they're on, they're on, you know, twin cam applications, whether that's a, a V8 or an inline six cylinder, or an inline four cylinder, or whatever. Sometimes the single pattern cams are just that single pattern cams. There's two of them. Sometimes there are four of them on a, on a four valve twin cam V8 motor, but they, that's not uncommon. And those cams, obviously we can run with turbos because we've done modular Fords that have that and coyotes that have that. 
And I'm sure that if we ran, which lots of guys have, if we ran turbos on a J series Honda, a C series Honda, a, you know, uh, the Nissan five, six, that's not a Titan. And then the one UZ, just any of these motors that would have that kind of camshaft, it still works. Does it work better than if we put bigger cams or dual pattern cams or, you know, all of that is, is going to require more testing to figure that out. But <laughs> there are applications where I have run that and it does work. I've run single pattern cams and on the factory stuff, obviously reverse pattern cams. And I've tried reverse pattern cams, but I've only tried reverse pattern cams that I can remember specifically where I did that because that, that was the, that was the turbo cam that people were offering. And I've tried those. And in, in every instance where I've tried that and compared the, the dual pattern cam versus a single pattern cam versus a reverse split cam, as long as I kept the exhaust duration, the same, the intake duration, the same, the dual pattern cam makes more power and the other cams <laughs> obviously make less power. And so I don't, it, it always, I always wondered why people would put that in a turbo application, you know, being that it's a reverse split camshaft like that. And the only reason I could think of is that people were trying to do, trying to improve the turbo response, but you would do that at the expense of, of obviously having more power. So well, let, let me know what you guys think. I'm, I want to see what, um, where are we at on our poll? 63% saying, yes, they have run single pattern cams. So lots of single pattern cams. Probably, I'm, I'm thinking OEM applications maybe. So I'm going to scroll back and see what people are talking about today here on this Friday night. TGI Turbo, I like that. Everything is better with boost. What camera would you recommend for a 49 flathead Dodge in an ice cream truck? It's just cool that you have that. How much power will Gen 5 big block Chevy rods hold? Um, we've done way over a thousand with those. So when would you use it on cylinder heads that flow the same or better on the exhaust? See, I disagree with the with the camshaft use in relation to the intake to exhaust flow relationship. I, I, I disagree with that. I disagree with the fact that when you change the intake to exhaust flow relationship, that they're going to want different camshafts because I've done so much testing on those kinds of things. And the example I always use is an LS3 head versus a cathedral port head. When you run two camshafts on those heads, they do exactly the same thing. They don't make exactly the same power because one of those flows has so much more intake flow. Even though it has a much worse intake to exhaust flow relationship, it makes more power because it's got a lot more intake flow. But if you run two camshafts on a cathedral port head and you run two camshafts on a, on a rec port head, the bigger cam or the cam that makes more power on the cathedral port head will also make more power on the rec port head. There, and there isn't one that's favoring one way more than the other because of this intake to exhaust flow relationship. And admittedly, that's that's not all inclusive testing or that's not the end all be all. It, it doesn't answer the question definitively in every example. But it shows me that people that are talking about that are are people that might also be talking about big changes from rod ratio and things like that. I could be wrong. Let's Richard, I'm thinking of running a 40 series flow master on my turbo 464 valve, my 66 Mustang. Kind of curious to have, have the same flow master sound or sound terrible. I don't, I don't think I've ever tried a flow master on a turbo application. I do want to run some, some turbo mufflers on a, on a turbo application and, and see how they do and, and see how much they hurt power. So Bob, a 210-220 cam will outperform a 210-210, but a 212 or a 215-215 will outperform both in horsepower. So you you've just made the single pattern cam bigger, right? Is what you've done? Point, points to fascist pendant there for ice cream trucks, light cold plugs, ice cream truck puns. There's nothing better than that. 
Peter, the four valve has its own sound, but look at videos on a 96 to Owen Cobra or a Lincoln Mark eight. Uh, the Bob, that would be an interesting test to see at what point, if any, the single pattern cam starts making more power. How much bigger do you have to make the intake duration to get it to work better than a dual pattern cam? I prefer a plain vanilla cam. <laughs> Just don't make me overthink a single subject. I get that. I get questions like that a lot. Like, and you're looking down this rabbit hole really, really deep, and the rabbit's just right there at the top. You just need to get the rabbit. Gen 4 6 liter, 799 truck Norris, GMC. Would like to add boost, not trying to make huge power number, just really good power without being concerned about heat on long poles. So that's a good motor. That's a good camshaft for that motor for, and for that application. Everything is good there. Logan. So we're, we're, everybody's guessing Logan's power output. Uh, 10, 10 to 1, 408, LS3 heads, 239, 254. That's a good size camshaft. Ran 98 Trans Am, T56, factory 10 bolt. Did the 10 bolt last? Were you drag racing it? 4, 411 gears? Were the were the LS3 head stock and and what intake manifold did you run on and did you run long tube headers and that and then I know what my guess will be. I know what my guess will be around six hundred. I'm thinking. Six hundred flywheel. Go look up the. Uh, can't remember. I thought that the I thought that the 408 that I did cam test on was a 239. Yeah, it was a 239, 247. We had good. Um, We had lots of good heads on it, though. So, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking 600 or less. Can I really use a wire wheel to clean the valve with no worry? Yes. Do we, I've done that literally. <laughs> Dozens of times, every every valve that I take apart, every every head that I take apart, that is like a junkyard deal. I did it on all the two point two stuff. Done on endless LS ones, big blocks, small blocks. Are the Magnum cams single pattern? I think that they are. So we look at small block Chevys. Ooh, the Launcher series. The high energies are single pattern. The high energy Marines and the Magnums are single pattern. Ooh, the pure energy though, which is one of the cams that I like on small on big on small blocks. Oh, there goes my freaking camera freaking out again. We're gonna hide you. We're gonna go up like this. <sighs> gotta do my scary. <laughs> gotta do my scary face. <laughs> Otherwise, he doesn't like me again. Waffle cone ice cream? Nobody likes that? How about the big vanilla? Big vanilla is good, right? There we go. Restricted intake, two barrel open headers. I'd love to see tests on something like that if it acts differently than a four barrel. I, a, Timothy, have you looked at the, at the channel? I actually have header tests done on a two barrel oval track motor where we ran a few different headers on it. Enjoy. I think a 486 geared to RPM proportionally slower would get fractionally better miles per gallon than a 454. Well, that's a neat theory, but we don't know that that's true. I haven't run a single pattern cam in 30 years. Is there any merit in, in talking trick flow Gen X 215 heads and, and 
or taking deshrouding the valves out to 4030 bore. Scribe lines for an appropriate gasket for use on an LQ4. A 215 head will work really good on a on a on a 4030 anyways. But if you if you unshroud the valve, it will probably work better. Yeah, I'm I'm with you, Eric. I don't know that piston speed is the thing that I would be considering if I'm thinking about fuel mileage, but yes, comp cams, magnum cams are single pattern cams. I have a comp single pattern cam, my Oldsmobile. It was a cam I bought when it was <laughs> still good shape, so I ran it. And for me, it, the cam I put in that 454 may have been because that's what was laying around at West Tech and it, it had to get run and I did. But I, I thought that um, I had Billy, after we ran that motor or originally, thought that I had Billy spec another camshaft for it or, or he had one ground that I told him the specs that I wanted to run because I wanted to adjust it and make it work with a, that exhaust. And I thought that that's what we came out with. At stock cam timing, I have piston contact. So did you ever measure piston to valve clearance with your with the with your stock cams, with your stock exhaust cam, turbo center? Or do you not have the cam in right? And also, do you know that that, that exhaust cam will actually work as an intake cam? Have you ever had a rocker arm pump excessive amount of oil out of it? You mean, I've had rocker arms squirt oil out when I remember when I did a small block Chevy with my stepfather, we were um, adjusting the valves with the motor running right after startup, after a fresh build. And we were, um, you know, <laughs> like you did back in the day uh, with the valve covers off and with the motor running you would back them off till they would clatter and then you would tighten it up till it stopped clattering. And then you'd, you know, put a half turn or whatever in it. And while we were doing that, we were just getting oil jetted in the face. They have the little clips that you put over them to guide the, the spray of oil that would come out of those. So they just run back over the rocker and that's a lot better, but it does get oil everywhere. And it's not, it's not really necessary for, to adjust them like that. That's one of the old school ways to do it. I just, we just, we just pump them up with a drill. We just get oil pressure to all of them and pump them up with a drill. And then it's really easy to adjust the valves and you don't have to get oil sprayed all over you. Can't you adjust the window that the camera focuses in? I, I can't externally. And as you saw, it, it wants to um, autofocus. Jason, any idea what a 408 might make with a 215 head and a truck Norris or, or I don't know what cam motion cam you're talking about, but a truck Norris on a 408 is a pretty small camshaft. So that's going to kind of limit you. The 215 head will support way over 600 horsepower. So you have enough cylinder head to do that. The Trailblazer S intake, intake is pretty good. When I did my 408, we had a fast intake manifold on it, which would be a good bit better on a 408, but it, it also had a lot more camshaft in it. It's just on one rocker, not on all of them. That seems odd. Would you do a stroker rebuild on a 68 SS 427 custom coupe with a 385 L36 or keep the stock crank? Well, you got you really got two choices there. If if the number if the motor is numbers matching and you want to keep that, then set that aside and just go to the wrecking yard and get a 454. Get a Gen 6 454, get a Gen 4 or Gen 5, and then make a 496 out of that. And then just keep the SS 4, 427 emblems on it. Uh, Casey, I didn't look up the specs on the Buick 350, but I can. You said it's a 1970. Okay. 
the Buick Scarlock 350 Sport Coupe. Uh, let's do a. What was it called though? It was a. It was something. Something specific though. All right, it had some weird name. So it was 10 and a quarter to one, 315 horse, 410 foot pounds. So that's, that's not going to really be a horsepower player with these other motors, but um, it would be interesting to see what it does. I still have an old orange Chevy valve cover set with a slot cut out that fits a five eighths oh deep socket for Justin while it runs it. I've never seen muffler test. Oh, I've seen muffler tests, but not aero turbine mufflers. I don't know what an aero turbine muffler is. And X pipes on the engine dyno. And engine masters did X pipes and H pipes on the engine dyno. And there wasn't very much difference in power between those. You ever tested the no chop sneaky cam? I have not. How would you build an LS for highest average horsepower? Where, where do you want to take your average horsepower number from? From what RPM to what RPM would be my question. Because the range that you're using would vary the kind of thing that you would build. And I've seen I've seen valve covers for small block Chevys that have the centerpiece. Um, they have a they have a removable centerpiece so that the edge is rolled over and then the centerpiece bolts on. And then if the oil sprays, it hits that edge of the of the rocker arm, and then you can get to the the um, adjusting nut. Trick Norris cam L7 with little, little compression and long tubes maxed out sock injectors on a pump one, pump gas 101 duty 101 duty cycle. Uh, if you just put a cam in an LM7, that should be more than the stock injectors can handle. 60 over Olds 403 I have as cross drilled main bearing journals. Nice. It's a race motor. Or if they didn't do all of them, it's three-quarter race. It's a good tunnel around for an old-school 049 head. Probably the Wyand, the old Wyand oval port. We've run that a lot, and it's worked fairly well. Okay, I'll, for you guys, I will look up the Grand Sport version. Was that a stage one that had a... Uh, had a rammer or something on it. Three fifty Buick, three fifty nineteen seventy Buick, three fifty Grand Sport. Grand Sport spec. It's still showing three hundred fifteen horsepower. Yeah, you're not gonna be a you're not gonna be a Buick place. The only thing I'm finding is three hundred and fifteen and four hundred and ten foot pounds. That's the only thing I'm seeing. Matching intake and exhaust cams. That always counts.
merge collectors uh, merge collectors on headers we've tested those a lot Knox 347, welcome. I still have my, of yours is an 85, that's cool. I have an 88, still original owner. 99 degrees in Melbourne today. <laughs> you, need, you, need, you guys are needing an ice cream truck there. Huh? Highest average horsepower from 1,800 to 6,500. That's, that's a really, really broad range. It'd be interesting because that would be that would be a lot like what we did with the engine masters thing, where we're trying to get the highest average horsepower and a higher highest average torque number. Excuse me, and then you add those two together, and that was your score. So we've I've done that stuff before, and it's a different kind of build than peak power. It's because you can't you can't have all of that. <laughs> But if that's what you're going for, if that's your goal, then you build the motor according to where you'd want to make, um, you know, a, a good average power. So I'd, I'd use a really tight LSA camp shaft for that. I've watched all your 454 videos. I have a Gen 4 with an XE256 dual plane 750. It's a 6,000 pound tow vehicle. Would Gen 6 heads be worth it? I don't know what heads you have on there. If you have a Mark IV, an early one, if you have big chamber heads, which most of those will be, they'll be 119 to 121 or two. If you put a Gen 6 head on, that's 102. So your compression is definitely going to go up. And if you just have one of the run of the mill oval port deals, um, these ha also have big oval ports. So they're probably going to flow similar to those. And so you'd have a big change in compression and, and it, it, that should pick up power. A friend has a 224, 224 crane cam and it went 1220. So I went and got a 228, 232. That should be good. A single pattern cam is a cam that has the same intake and exhaust duration. Can also have the same intake and exhaust lift, but the duration is, is more my concern. There's some fun to do on the Dyna run. Two engines built exactly the same. One to 454 and one to 496. Run the three nine or 396. Run the 396 first and then throttle back the 454 to make the same peak torque and brake specific fuel consumption. So at the same RPM you're talking about? Uh, Richard, why is an LV1 more sought out than an LV3? Because one of them is, um, what, what do they have? They have some um, variable cam or DOD or something like that that guys don't want to deal with on the LV3. It might be out of time. Stock it at 155 thousandths. Yeah, if you're, I don't know how much you're changing the duration, but 155 is quite a bit. Santana, I've got a 48 and plan to turbo it, but I was wondering if I should buy different heads, 243s, or you no, know, you should keep the ones that are on there on there that you'll you'll make all the power that you want with the heads that are on there. No, no sense in buying heads. What about a cam, a stage two turbo? That's, in my opinion, is going to be way too big for a 4.8. It'll be really laggy and you won't like it. Um, the stock cam will work well on a 4.8 or a small camshaft. So think think truck Norris or think stage one anything. Stage one NA cam, stage one turbo cam. I think the stage one turbo cam is also too big. I, I would pick something small for a 4.8. At 215 cranking PSI, my 440 on E85, 13 to 1 static, 11.7 with a 254. Is 11.7 your static compression? Okay. Or 13 to 1 static compression, 11.7 dynamic compression, I guess, is what you're getting out on the 254, 260 cam. 
I want to advance it four degrees to shift the power band. Does it does it not make power in the RPM range that you want? NASCAR used aero turbine mufflers. I'll have to see if Westec has any of those. Maybe maybe Freiburger has te has tested those. All cam seem to be good for turbo setups, 5.3, not stock. The stock cam works fine with a turbo. We've run it 20 times with stock cams, and they work fine. It's just every cam does what it does. It does whatever power curve it does in A, and then turbo just makes makes that same curve. If you have boost the same boost everywhere, it just elevates everything. It just multiplies it. It's just with a stock cam, you're starting at a low number. So when you multiply it, you don't get too big of a number. Like from 350, you get to 700 at 14 and a half pounds. But if you put a cam in it, you start at 400 and, and now you get to 800 at 14 and a half pounds. So that's why people do the cams on them. And the stock cam works with boost. Like I said, it just doesn't make as much power. The high compression Buick 350s were 10 and a quarter. Yeah, that's the one that I was reading. The, the 10 and a quarter spec version was the one that I was looking at, and they said it made 315 and 410 foot pounds. Would a 302 be more cost effective to build versus a 351? No, I don't think so. I because if I was start if you were starting with nothing, if you're already starting with a 302 and then you're gonna buy the stroker, that's different than that's a different comparison to buying a 351 and already having a 302. If you have neither one of them, I would just get the 351. The 351 is going to be better. You can go get it from a wrecking yard. It's bigger. It will always make more power. Um, it's already assembled. It's already running. All you have to do is put decent heads or camera, that kind of thing in it, rather than buy a stroker assembly, which even a even a cast stroker assembly on a 347, which is what I would run on a streetcar, is um, still going to be more expensive than buying a 351. Like the idea of a forward-facing inlet pro charger. Oh, you want? Um, they don't. Don't they have? I know Vortec used to make reverse rotation ones, like for modular Ford stuff, where the inlet into the blower was open to the front toward the radiator side. But then you also have radiator flow into that, so that's problematic. If it's rear-facing, you're grabbing air off the header and getting cold air to it. Like the Mustang was like that too. The five-liter Mustang was like that. So we we made sure that we had a dedicated tube going over into the fender well to get cold air because it's very important. Otherwise, you're just grabbing air from the heated engine compartment right by the exhaust, none of which are good. Does anyone know who makes the power valve extension cover with the bottom fuel pickup holes? Are you talking about on a carburetor, on a Holly carburetor? Because jet extensions will fit in a stock bowl. So I don't know which one you're talking about. Back in the day, a Crower Baja Torque Master in a big block mope car because it was most closely matched a Magnum cam in the late 70s. Good. 450, 455 Buick Stage 4 heads. Wow. 280 XE 285 cam. Stock, uh, you have peanut ports on the 454. So it was a later Gen 4 then, or Mark 4. Have you thought about the series of doing on Ecotex? I haven't because I just have, I don't know how to hook them up to the dyno right now. I saw an, after, an aftermarket cast iron intake manifold for Cadillacs. Why would anybody do an aftermarket cast iron one? Uh, hot mess. Uh, so you're both the cams are the same in the intake exhaust. That's a single pattern setup. We talked about that for four valve motors. 
Single pattern cam in your circle track car. It was a uh, Scott Hatch video. I, I did stuff with Scott out at the, out at Cadco. He's, he's, that's a knowledgeable guy on the, on the Cadillac stuff. I have run four pattern cams. I think I went, oh, here we go. Rich, are you planning on more 5.9 Magnum stuff? Yes. 307 Ols, 262, 274 duration. So that's got to be the advertised duration, right? That's not a that's not the number at 50, because that'd be a big camshaft for a 307 if it's the number at 50. But that's an advertised duration. So that that should work good. Yeah, turbo century. If uh, I don't know on your application if that's if that exhaust cam can be run as a an intake cam. I think on the quad fours they could you could do that, but I don't know about yours, so it might not work. I'm running a Comp 268H. Is that a is that a Magnum cam? Richard, are you still looking for 429 Cobra Jet parts? I was looking for Super Cobra Jet parts, actually, to do it. Just leave the... I mean, the street-driven cars, just leave the engine stock and rely on the turbo to make all the power. What is the best head for a 434 LS... A billet block LS? Is that what you're asking? Uh, I'd need more information to tell you what head to use. Chris, I have an early 5.7 Hemi cam specs for both intake and exhaust for 212, 525 lift. Is that is that a stock cam that's in there that has that? Or is that some kind of aftermarket cam? It's got to be an aftermarket cam because I don't think the stock Hemi cams are anywhere near that big. Currently have long tubes, unequal length with equal length headers help. If you have long tubes, they're going to be equal length. Having the tubes be um, in their unequal length now because they have to do that to make them fit. And equal length headers like custom headers or whatever are not going to do anything for you. E303 cam with 165s. How far should I advance my cam? Why do you want to advance it? I, I am watching Top Chat. Am I missing? Am I missing questions here? And I and I'm also delayed because I haven't got to the bottom yet of all of the of all the questions. I'd like to see the same engine ran with the same cam same cam at z at zero. I've run cams with. Um, you know, run dot to dot, and then I've advanced them four degrees and retarded them four degrees. We've done cam sweeps, if that's what you're asking about. Charger, it makes peak power at 6,400, and I want to keep the RPM down to keep it alive. I could use a little more mid-range hit, so I'm going to try four degrees and measure. Yeah, make sure you measure piston to valve, because as you as you advance the intake, it's definitely going to change piston to valve. And then what intake manifold? If you're only running that RPM range, are you do you have a single plane intake manifold on right now? Do any of the throttle body EFI kits work as good as they are advertised? I I haven't seen that, but maybe they're better now. Does anyone know what a good forge, what a good piston to wall clearance should be on a small block Windsor? So four inch bore, a four or thirty bore. I forge pistons from DSS, and they won't give me. They won't give you a spec on how much piston to wall clearance they want on their forge piston. <laughs> they don't know growth on their forge piston.
Um, on your DSS piston, I, I would put it four and a half or five thousandths. That's what the change in bore size should be between the two. So you're going to have to have two or two and a half piston to wall on each side. One thing I'm wondering if a turbo, if I turbo on 5.3, I worry about the stock truck manifold. It's plastic. I've seen the metal ones, uh, high rise, cheap, $500 on Amazon. You don't have to worry about the intake manifold. We've run 28 pounds on those plastic manifolds, so you're fine. You won't ever do anything bad to the manifold with your turbo. Uh, Danny, it's um, it's getting it it's getting it running. It's having a a different ECU to make it run. It's having a different harness to make it run. It's having motor mounts. It's having flywheel. It's having the bell housing. All of the stuff that's required to get it up there and get it working, and then do testing on it, and then get a motor. So as you might imagine, the first one that I would run on there, it could be thousands of dollars to to make a motor run on the dyno. And so it gets really expensive and, and time consuming, both of which are terrible things. <laughs> Richard, have you ever thought of incorporating reed valves into a tunnel ram to see what happens with zero reversion? Why would you want zero reversion? So think that you're, I think that what you're doing, I think you're confusing reversion with reflected waves and you actually want reflected waves to happen because that's how you get power production. Love the 4200 turbo action. What about the 4200 Amera Bear with two kits of nitrous? I don't know why you would need two kits. Just one, one could blow the motor up. One flows enough nitrous to blow the motor up. Let's see. Two sixty eight is a magnum. Okay, two eighteen. Yeah, two eighteen, two eighteen. <laughs> Do you have a favorite band? I my music uh, choices are pretty diverse. I did go see the Ramones in concert. I also went to see Elton John in concert. ACDC. The bus boys. Thank for answering TG, TG, TGE cam. Is it? Oh, the, that's probably the, the cams aftermarket known as a sidewinder, similar to a comp XFI 260. I've run the 260 cam before I have tests up on that camshaft. It worked pretty well. We picked up good power with that. Oh, Scott said there are classes that require cast iron intake manifolds. Well, he would know about those classes. They, they do a lot of Cadillac stuff out there. Uh, oh, Charger had a Torque or two intake manifold. Yeah, you can do a lot better than that on intake manifolds, which will add quite a bit of low speed power and mid range power. And, and quite honestly, for 6,400 RPM or less, I, I still might think dual plane on it. A dual plane with a like half inch open spacer or a, a cut divider on it, I think would work pretty well. Uh, Ron, Toyota 3UR FE V8 and an AMC Pacer. I don't know. I don't know anything about that motor. I've never tested it, so it's hard for me to say. But a, a V8 swap in a pacer is awesome. And the pacer itself is awesome. So, yes, I'm, I'm in. 331 small block, 305H cam. How would it work? 253. It's, a, it's not going to be a street cam. <laughs> I can tell you that. 253 and a 331 small block is going to be a lot of camshaft. It's going gonna, it's gonna to need a lot of cylinder head and a lot of intake manifold and a lot of RPM. I think you'd be much happier in a street car going like 
30 degrees less duration than that. Have you ever seen a centrifugal blower set up that sources its air from the windshield wiper cow? Yeah, we did that way back when I was running the Bridgestone supercar series where I was running a Mustang and we had a Vortec on it and our air ducting, like I was saying, the superchargers mounted to the side of the motor with the opening adjacent to the header. So we put um, shielding over the header and then we ran our four inch tube going into the supercharger back to an opening in the cowl and had our, we had an air cleaner in there too, a big four inch K&N deal. But we ran our tube into a hole that we cut and mounted the air cleaner in the cowl area. And that worked really good because it's a cold air source. And at speed, um, you do have some pressure there. I think the LH2 North Star engine is really underrated. But what, what is it underrated about? Let's see. Can you run a 4200 turbo and a 200 shot of nitrous? You 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 can. <laughs> Again, you can make as much power as you need to make with a turbo. I mean, if we can make a thousand horsepower with a turbo, I don't know why we'd, we would need nitrous too. But I have run nitrous with turbos before. You can, guys do that to get them to spool up sometimes with really big turbos. Mike's in the house. Mike, what kind of fuel mileage does your 8.1 turbo get? No manifold needed for turbo. No, you don't need that. The, the, the truck manifold actually works pretty well. You can, you can easily make a thousand horsepower with that truck manifold without any problem at all. How would you decide to pull timing when injecting nitrous? We, we base that on a couple of things, but two degrees per 50 horsepower is a pretty safe amount. Sometimes we don't pull any on the first hundred shot, especially if we have good fuel in it. We wouldn't pull any timing at all. And then we would start pulling timing after that. But the size of the motor doesn't really matter. The size of the jet matters. Um, and, we, and we base it like they tell you to do it on uh, timing per horsepower. Has anyone known of a stock truck manifold to blow apart under boost and how much boost it take? It, it will never do that under boost. Nobody runs that much boost unless it's a tractor pull thing or something where they have boost. Where, where they do break is um, instantaneous pressure spikes. What I mean by that is a, is a backfire. A backfire in the intake manifold can easily blow that up because the, the pressure spike in it could be 100 or 200 PSI. And, it, and it's very, very fast. So that can blow them apart, but that can blow apart um, aluminum intake manifolds too. Thanks. I look for that clip trying to decide minus four or zero, but want more off the line may change the cam. That's usually the answer. The swing that we get in power from advancing and retarding the cam is not dramatic. Ramones and Elton John, probably not the same gig. Um, actually, the um, uh, Joey Ramone was a big fan of Elton John. Their cool flat fours are terrible. I listen to everything from gospel to the insane clown posse. A day in the life. I like the um, Troy at West Tech has um, a deal that he listens to where the... Um, they do country versions of the um, country versions of rap songs, which is really pretty cool. Yes, pace, a pacer is awesome in, in every way possible. Let's see. What would happen on a dual plane intake if you completely remove the divider? Um, it, it'll still act as a it'll still act as a dual plane because you still have overs and unders. 
but the the more that you cut the divider, I would imagine as you get to where you've removed it all the way, uh, or or as you get past a certain point that it, that it keeps doing the same thing. If you cut it a little bit, it has less of an effect, and you cut it more, and it has more of an effect. But I, you probably get to a point, and I don't know how deep some of these dividers are, on, and they're going to be different on different manifolds. Uh, Edward, if you have a 400 in it, you should, I, I like the 400s. Uh, top fuel motors have blower cams in them. Uh, Frosty, you're talking, is, is CNP coil unplug or something like that? If you take a small block Chevy, your typical 400 horsepower small block Chevy and run it with a distributor and then take all of that off and spend a million dollars putting coil on plug stuff on it, you're not going to, it's not going to do anything. So Mike, your, your, um, your 8.1 gets 16 miles to the gallon on the freeway. That's, that's a lot better than I thought. 12 towing. Uh, Eric, I know what the North Star engine is. I, I'm just asking why you think that it's underrated. <laughs> Have you done any testing on the fast LSXR 102 intakes? Yes, hundreds of times. That, that's probably an exaggeration, but I know at least I've run it. I know I've run it hundreds of times. Do you have a Nova of a company that offers a twin turbo kit for a G8? I don't know about specific chassis for, you know, specific kits. Uh, Chris, try not to use the word thoughts when you're asking questions. I, I don't like open-ended questions, but to answer your question, um, the, those fabricated intake manifolds, I have videos up on those sniper cell intake manifolds. And they're short runner intake manifolds, so they lose lots of power. Most guys buy them because they look cool. They look better than a truck manifold, but it does lose power through most of the curve. At what point do you recommend running a progressive controller when you're having trouble with traction? Sixteen miles per gallon seems like really high, Mike. My my five three truck only gets nineteen on the freeway. Coil near plug, okay. Michael, thank you very much. Well, I, and I don't mean coil unplug. I mean like if you have an LS and the coil is adjacent to the plug, what well, I call that an individual coil deal. So it's one coil per cylinder. So I don't care if it plugs right in, like on a um, on a modular Ford. They just the coil basically just plugs into it with a with a long extension. But how, however they do that, just one individual coil per thing. But it does nothing for power on these mild street applications. Yes, Michael, it's Friday night too. It's time for a drink, right? Chris Alston or two chassis kits. I I've done, I, I did some stuff with the guys from Alston and they're, they're good people. They make good stuff. Richard, do you know any good budget friendly turbo kits for sale? I, you'd have to go online and search. I don't know. I don't usually test kits. I just put them together myself. My 2.2 S10 gets 20, ZX14 gets 44. 
<laughs> there's, there's Marty's pro tip. Pro tip in live chat, never use the word thoughts and best that you're welcome. Otherwise, Richard will go off on you. Smokey tried individual quotes. Yeah, there's not going to be you. It's it's like we've talked about many times. It, are, are you, they are better. And the rise time is better. The, the power output's probably better. Um, you're going to have fewer misfires. But only when there's a problem and you've cured the problem. If you <laughs> if there isn't a problem and you're trying to cure a problem, there isn't a problem. And so you're not going to get anything. Uh, uh, Granitelli coil test. Yeah, I, I think not. Richard, have you ever run the first gen trick flow twisted wedge heads? Yeah, I did. I did way back. I heard that plenty of valve. I don't know if it's a valve geometry problem that they know that they wore the guides out in those, right? Isn't that the problem that they had? Uh, getaway. So you're going to try to keep it all wheel drive with the LS swap. That would be cool. All wheel drive stuff would be neat. I would love to have a, a, a Dodge Omni with a K series Honda and have it be all wheel drive. Justin, watched a video on eBay Sloppy Stage 2 cam, and they cam doctored it. It came out as 237, 245. It can't be 237, 245 because that cam won't fit stock piston to valve clearance. So I know it's not that. <laughs> and it makes power like a 228, 230 camshaft. And I know that because I've run about six different versions of that camshaft. And so I would think that that's not accurate. It doesn't make power like a 237 cam. It makes power exactly like a 228 cam, like the other 228 cams I've run. Anyone know what uh, Dino Tune runs on average? Just finished adding a GT45 turbo to a 2000 Mustang. Closest shop starts at 800. Is this typical or not? It depends on, is that for a day? Richard, what do you think about wet belt and small block shaving for circle track use? All of the belt drives I've seen are not wet belt drives, though. Is that something new? Uh, Chris, no worries, man. That's why the, the guys that are new here, we just tell them. Um, for me, the thing is that I get guys all the time asking um, in comments and stuff, hey, Richard, uh, Turbo LS, what are your thoughts? <laughs> like, dude, I can't. That's not a question. Just if you have a question, just ask the question. Uh, Rachel D, I have a set. I'm repairing it now. I've always liked the Twisted Wedge heads. I, I remember, like I said, I tell the story when I was driving with the um, guy who was the head of marketing at Summit way back when they were before they had introduced this twisted wedge head, we were driving and he's like, Richard, I got, I got one. I got to ask you because we're working on something. What's going to happen if somebody introduces a small, a small block Ford aluminum head that's less than a thousand dollars that is like, you know, weighs 40 pounds less or whatever and picks up 40 or 50 horsepower. I said, well, you guys are, you guys are going to have trouble keeping them in stock. I said, you're going to sell, you're going to sell thousands of them. And he said, yep, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. And, and they did. Nick, you got a six liter. You want 700 horsepower and the ability to make 900. I would put two GT 3076s on it.
Would a 74 rotor with a 400 be a fun vehicle with a TKX 400 speed? Yeah, that would be great. 862 heads, 799 or 243. A 799 and 243 are the same head. So there's no comparison between those two. So it depends on what you are trying to get done, um, what what bore size they're going on and stuff, all of that. Old RX-3 racers, I really like those. I ran against those as IT cars when I was running show or stock in my Mustang. Would mount four Excel super coils. If you had anything back in the day, you, if you were anybody, you had the yellow Excel super coil. On the inner fender and run HT wires to the leading and trailing plugs and throw away the distributor cap. I only put zinc-based oil in my 70 Plymouth. Nice. Will you get better fuel distribution on a ton around by turning the rear carburetor 180 degrees? We normally run the carburetors not front to back. We run them side to side so that we can corner jet them. It's not hard to get 500 inches from a Mopar 440. Oh, 400. No, 400, I think you still can. John Cosy's P51 small block four heads or so rare. Have you run a set on them? I did run Cosy heads way back in the day, but I don't know if they were um, P51 heads. They did flow more than everything else. They flowed a bit more than everything else that we tested, but they didn't make as much power as the, I don't think that they made as much power as the Airflow Research head or the, the, the Twisted Wedge R head. And I even ran his heads twice and then put the, because I thought that they should make more power, I put the Twisted Wedge R heads back on to um, to make sure there wasn't something wrong with the motor and, and it repeated perfectly with the R heads on it. Uh, would slow ramp rates do on what would they do on a camshaft? Uh, sometimes they make it more stable for high RPM. Just twisted wedge, twisted wedge Ford Windsor heads are better than OEM Ford Cleveland heads. Um, I don't think that they're better than an OEM Ford 4V Cleveland head. What turbo for 4200 Envoy to make 800 horsepower? Probably a VS Racing 7875. Might go a little smaller than that, but Viren would know if he has something right under that. Yes, all-wheel drive is definitely beneficial. One more minute. In fact, it's time to go. 56% saying yes. Have you ever run a single pattern cam? 44% saying no. Uh, Dave, I like that idea. Low RAM with, with um, Weber's on it. That's pretty cool. I was going to do something like that for the... Um, for the Dodge, because I wanted to do a, um, I wanted to do a tri-power deal on, on a Dodge, uh, on a Hemi, and we were going to do that on uh, with. I was going to use um, three of the two-barrel throttle body things on it, but I don't know. We just, I lost interest. I just thought it was cool. I always catch these right at the end. Let's see.
Yours will be the last question. Sorry if it already was asked, but small block Ford 1.6 rockers on the intake, 172 rockers on the exhaust with an with a E303 with speed density does seem to be plausible. I don't know about our have you tuned this? Have do you do you have the ability to put chips in and, and tune the factory ECU? And I don't know why you would go that direction. I would be more apt to put the bigger rockers on the intake side because the intake seems to make seems to be responsible for making more power gains than the exhaust. And I don't know why you wouldn't put 172s on both of them. If you're going to step that up, I mean, why don't you just step it up? That'd be my recommendation, but it's Friday night. It's time to go. Hopefully you guys all have a good weekend, but even if you don't, whether you do or not, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bam, 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 bam.